Did you ever work closely with a sports psychologist or was there, you know, was there a time where you go, right, I actually need to start buying into this stuff? Yeah, look, it was, it, I did actually. And it, it was it's probably no surprise that it was when I played my best rugby. Now, it was when I came left the Highlanders and came back to the Crusaders. Mm. Um, um, we, had a, we had a guy, Renzi, who used to, uh, used to more talk to the team, but he was available for individuals. And I and I just sort of caught up with him. I was like, look, you know, like I've, I don't want to say I came back in pieces, but, I, you know, like I was, I was sort of pretty down at that stage. But at the same time, I was pretty confident that I could come back and play good rugby. Um I knew, knew, knew that I could, and I was still young enough. So, well, I just had chats to him, and it was more he focused a lot on like rediscovering good feelings and remembering good emotions because you know emotion and your thought patterns and and then your actions are all so so balanced and so intertwined. So, um, visualization, things like that, you remember all the good times, you know, like and, and how did that make you feel when you did that, you know, and, and all of a sudden you just feel like lighter. You'd naturally, you know, you're at, actually feel like lighter in your seat as opposed to probably hunching over when you're a bit down um, and it's amazing yeah how much that sort of grew and 2014 when I came back to Crusaders um, yeah look had a, had a great year if I can say so without being mm. um, trying to be humble and all the rest of it but uh, yeah 2014 and 15 and, and again it was back in the a pretty solid sort of outfit but at the end of the day like your ability to perform in that, in that team is, is testament I suppose to your own situation so you've got to be good enough to do it and and I was and um, ended up sort of basically playing two years there at, at 10 there and, and played definitely my best two years well two years in New Zealand rugby anyway um, mm. were in there and I, and I honestly put that down to Renzi I think the mental side of the game is something again that you don't really appreciate when, you, when you're young you just sort of take it day by day and you mentioned before about that like bottling up all that ex- all those experiences and stuff. Like, even if somebody gave me that full formula man I'd I wouldn't appreciate it because I hadn't been through it. Um, mm. A simple, a simple one that uh, I can say now is I'm 32, and uh, like you've got to enjoy rugby, you've got to enjoy your sport um, because it goes quick, and and it's it's definitely something you you've got to make the most of while you're there. And you, you, I, I heard that heaps. I heard that heaps yeah. 23, 24, and it was just like you really, you know, like it's such a cliche thing to hear. But like saying that now and looking back, and it's like fire up, man. I remember, you know, like my debut at 22. That was 10 years ago now. It was like shucks it's just gone and now um, you know you start looking at your career a little bit differently now you're sort of looking oh, i've probably got two more years maybe three you start counting back you know like mm. as opposed to when you're 22 23 you're not thinking backwards you're only thinking you know what you have done and, and what your next contract's going to be so it's um yeah it's it's definitely yeah it's definitely that like as you get older your, your perspective definitely changes and stuff like that and i go a bit off topic here but i do that no, I love it. I love it. You talk because again, the, the the interviews that I've done so far, talking to you know older retired athletes, um, you know, getting trying to get advice. Uh, yeah, well, even but it's trying to get advice from them, and and they always go back to enjoy the game. And I agree with you. And I heard that. I go, what? Like what? You know, what are they? To- I'm trying to enjoy. The- I'm trying to enjoy the game, but it's um. It's, it's, yeah, sometimes when it's not going well, it's like, I'm not enjoying this game at the moment. You know, this is not fun. What were some elements or, yeah, what were the elements of rugby that you really enjoyed and what was some of those things that you used to look back on to create that, um, I guess, that light feeling? What were the memories that you looked back on in particular to create that light feeling? Um, first of all, it's not enjoyed. It's still current. I'm still playing, so I'm still enjoying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, look, I think, like, your good moments, and you, everyone has games where you you play your best rugby. I know that various people call it different things. Your blue zone, your whatever, your, your light, light, light bright and whatever, all that sort of stuff, like all these mm. sort of words. And, but you think about your good your good games where you're actually not thinking a lot or you're not certainly not thinking about the negative content consequences and stuff like that and it's more you know it might be this like uh, amazing catch you did or amazing hundred you, you scored or, or whatever sport um you just felt unbeatable you felt invincible and it's just about like how did that make you feel like and it's like well, happy but you know like how did that like make you feel like you know like how did that how did you how did you walk how did you talk and all that sort of stuff and the body language that comes with it and your persona and all that sort of stuff and um yeah i think and again being in teams that played really well growing up and stuff like that. Well, I thought, geez, that was easy. You know, like we won the item cup. We did all this. 
mm. you know, I scored a couple of tries in that game, and I, you know, I sort of felt like the top of the world. And um, yeah, and, and kicking was a big one that I worked a lot with Renzi about too. Was just like, well, you know, when you're at the top of your mark and you and you've got to you got to kick to win the game or whatever like that. Like, how does that make you feel? You know, like, and you you, you can go through that process. Like, well, what if you know, what if it was just a training? Would you feel like that? And I go, nah, well, why don't you treat it like that? You know, like. Um, and again, it goes back to what I touched on a little bit before about that whole pressure and, and all that sort of stuff. And you sort of certainly, um, you know, learn to handle that a little bit more. And I tried to explain before more about that. You know, you might have oh, hundreds or tens, twenties, thirties, or whatever the number of important kicks in your life. And mm. the more you do it, the more comfortable you get at that level because you know you you make some, you miss some, and you and you get you're. You obviously want to make them all, but you know you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself. So it's just been quite philosophical in in your approach. And yeah, um, I definitely think that yeah, the older you get, the less pressure you put on yourself because you've seen the pitches, you've done it before, you mm. take your ten thousand hours of kicking or whatever it is, and, and you've just got that confidence in yourself. Mm. 